you have most likely heard of the microchip, and you may also have been aware of its central role in modern-day tech. But what was the lead-up to its creation, or the steps needed for fabrication, or what about what's in store for its future? In this lesson, which is divided into two videos, you will take a deeper dive into the world of the microchip. So here it goes. The microchip is very common today. But have you ever wondered, was there something before the microchip? Or was the world just devoid of all electronic devices? Well, the answer is simply no. There were technologies which existed that used components other than the microchip. One of these components was the vacuum tube. The vacuum tube, in many ways, shared similarities with the light bulb. But its main function was that of an electrical switch, meaning it can be turned on and off by an electrical signal. This capability is very useful in electronics, and for the first half of the 20th century, the vacuum tube was featured in many devices. But alongside its many implementations, the vacuum tube was also used to build logic circuits. Some of these circuits were adapted into the first binary-based computers, which were mostly used by the military. So what happened to the vacuum tube? Why is it nowhere to be found in modern tech? Well, the easiest discernible reason has to do with the size of the component. It was very large, which made it practically impossible to build small devices, especially ones that could be carried around in your pocket. So if progress had left the vacuum tube behind, what replaced it? Well, to fully grasp what had happened, you will first need a quick lesson in the three different types of materials found in electrical engineering. So here it goes. A conductor is a material that allows the flow of current in one or more directions. In contrast, an insulator restricts any flow of current. And as for the third type, the semiconductor, its attribute lies somewhere in the middle. So what's the big deal? Well, as temperatures rises in a semiconductor, the resistance decreases. And if impurities were to be introduced, a junction could be created within the material. Now, if the current was to be regulated at that junction, also known as the gate, the flow of electrons through the material could be controlled, producing similar results as that of the vacuum tube. But unlike the vacuum tube, this new component, called the transistor, is much smaller, has a longer lifespan, and does not get as hot. With the newly invented transistor, it did not take long for engineers to envision something on a much grander scale. In 1949, a German engineer filed a patent for an amplifying device consisting of five transistors integrated into a piece of semiconductor. Shortly after, the idea of the integrated circuit was conceived. Now the transistor was not the only component being considered. Entire electronic circuits were now in the minds of inventors. But a decade would pass after the filing of the first patent when an employee at Texas Instrument, Jack Kilby, would demonstrate the first working prototype of an integrated circuit. For this, he would later be awarded the Nobel Prize in physics. As groundbreaking as Kilby's design was, it had flaws. Some of these flaws would soon be addressed in a separate design by Robert Noyce. One example is the implementation of the now common silicon instead of germanium. 